Hello and welcome to Cloud Learners Journey Part 8 of Azure Administrator Associate Real Exam Questions and Answers with Explanation and References which you can find in the description. So let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe to our Cloud Learners Journey YouTube channel to help you pass the AZ104 exam and become an Azure Administrator Associate. Question 1. You have an Azure subscription named Subscription 1. You have 5 TB of data that you need to transfer to Subscription 1. You plan to use an Azure Import Export job. What can you use as the destination of the imported data? And here the options are A. An Azure Cosmos DB database B. Azure Blob Storage C. Azure Data Lake Store D. The Azure File Sync Storage Sync Service And the correct option is B. Azure Blob Storage Azure Import Export Service is used to securely import large amounts of data to Azure Blob Storage and Azure Files by shipping disk drives to an Azure Data Center. There are several versions of this question in the exam. The question has two correct answers. One, Azure File Storage or Azure Blob Storage. Next, question number two. You have an Azure subscription. You plan to deploy a storage account named Storage1 by using the following Azure Resource Manager template. And we see the template and with the name Storage1 and the type Microsoft.Storage forward slash storage accounts. Here, Microsoft.Storage is the resource provider and the resource type is the storage account. Location is East US. And the properties are allow block public access through default to auth authentication is false. And you see the other information below. And it's a continuation. And you see the name storage one forward slash default and the type here, Microsoft.Storage forward slash storage accounts forward slash blob services and you see the other information below. For each of the following statements, select yes if the statement is true, otherwise select no. For the first statement, changes made to the data in storage one can be rolled back after seven days and the correct option is no. The heat retention policy is seven days, so cannot be restored after seven days, means backup is deleted after seven days. Second statement, only users located in the East US Azure region can connect to storage one and the correct option is no. Hello blob public access is true, so anyone can access the blob, not just an Azure. Third statement, three copies of storage one will be maintained in the East US Azure region. And the option is yes. Here, SKU is standard LRS, so three local copies are stored. Hence, it is the correct answer. Next, question number three. You download an Azure Resource Manager template based on an existing virtual machine. The template will be used to deploy 100 virtual machines. You need to modify the template to reference an administrative password. You must prevent the password from being stored in plain text. What should you create to store the password? And the options are A. An Azure keyword and an access policy B. An Azure storage account and an access policy C. A recovery service vault and a backup policy D. Azure Active Directory identity protection and an Azure policy And the correct option is a. An Azure Key Vault and an Access Policy You can use a template that allows you to deploy a simple Windows Virtual Machine by retrieving the password that is stored in a Key Vault. So therefore, the password is never put in a plain text in the template parameter file. Next, question number 4. You have an Azure Active Directory tenant named adatom.com that contains the users shown in the following table. We have the columns name and the role. We see user 1, user 2, user 3 and 4 respectively. Adatom.com has the following configurations. Users may join devices to Azure AD is set to user 1. Additional local administrators on Azure AD joined devices is set to none. You deploy Windows 10 to a computer named computer 1. User 1 joins computer 1 to Adatom.com. You need to identify the local administrator group membership in computer 1. Which users are members of the local administrators group? And the options are A. User 1 only B. User 2 only C. User 1 and User 2 only D. User 1, User 2 and User 3 only E. User 1, User 2, User 3 and User 4 And the correct option is C. User 1 and User 2 only Users may join devices to Azure AD. This settings enables you to select the users who can register their devices as Azure AD joint devices. Additional local administrators on Azure AD joined devices, you can select the users that are granted local administrators rights on a device. Users added here are added to the device administrator role in Azure AD. 
here user 2 in the Azure AD and device owners are granted local administrator rights by default. Next, question number 5. We have an Azure subscription that contains the resources shown in the following table. We see the columns name, type and the region. RG1 is in West US region, RG2 is in East Asia, Storage 1 is in West US, Storage 2 is in East Asia, VM1 is in West US, VNet1 is in West US, VNet2 is in East Asia. VM1 connects to VNet1. You need to connect VM1 to VNet2. Here the solution is, you will create a new network interface and then you add the network interface to VM1. Does this meet the goal? And the options are A. Yes. B. No. And the correct option is B. No. You should delete VM1 and then you recreate VM1 and then you add the network interface for VM1. Next, question number 6. You have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com and an Azure Kubernetes service cluster named AKS1. An administrator reports that she is unable to grant access to AKS1 to the users in Contoso.com. You need to ensure that access to AKS1 can be granted to the Contoso.com users. What should you do first? And the options are A. From Contoso.com, modify the organization relationship settings. B. From Contoso.com, create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. C. Recreate AKS1. D. From AKS1, create a namespace. And the correct option is B. From Contoso.com, create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. Azure AD authentication is provided to AKS clusters with OpenID Connect. OpenID Connect is an identity layer but on top of the OAuth 2.0 protocol. Next, question number 7. You have an Azure subscription that contains a virtual network named VNet1 in the East US2 region. A network interface named VM1NI is connected to VNet1. You successfully deploy the following Azure Resource Manager template. Here you see the template with the information type microsoft.compute forward slash virtual machines zones 1 location east us 2 and you see the further information below. It's a continuation to the template type microsoft.compute slash virtual machines name vm2 zones 2 location east us 2 and you see the further information below. For each of the following statements select yes if the statement is true otherwise select no. In the answer area for the first statement, VM1 and VM2 can connect to VNet1 and the option is yes. Being in the same region, both VMs can connect to the same VNet. Second statement, if an Azure data center becomes unavailable, VM1 or VM2 will be available. And the correct option is yes. VM1 and VM2 are in different zones. So if a data center becomes unavailable, either one or another will still be available. Third statement, if the East US2 region becomes unavailable, VM1 or VM2 will be available. And the option is no. Both VMs are on the same region. So if it goes down, both VMs will be down as well. Next question number 8. You have an Azure subscription named Sub1 that contains two users named User1 and User2. You need to assign role-based access control roles to User1 and User2. The users must be able to perform the following tasks in sub 1. User 1 must view the data in any storage account. User 2 must assign users the contributor role for storage accounts. The solution must use the principle of least privilege. Which RBAC role should you assign to each user? Here we see the RBAC roles owner, contributor, reader and data access, storage account, contributor. And for the user 1, we need reader and data access. Reader and data access lets you view everything but will not let you delete or create storage account or contain the resource. It will allow read write access to all data contained in a storage account via access to a storage account keys. And for user 2, owner. Owner is needed to manage permissions as user access administrator is not offered as an option. Next question number 9. You have an Azure AD tenant named Contestor.com. We have two external partner organizations named Fabricam.com and LitwareInc.com. Fabricam.com is configured as a connected organization. You create an access package as shown in the access package exhibit. Here you see the access package exhibit uh, with the name package one, description guest users, catalog name general and you see the further options below. You configure the external user lifecycle settings as shown in the lifecycle exhibit. 
here to manage the life cycle of external users block external user from signing into this directory yes remove external user yes number of days before removing external user from this directory 30 and you see the other options below and you see the other information below for each of the following statements select yes if the statement is true otherwise select no we see the statements here litwareinc.com users can be assigned to package one and the option is no litware is not a connected organization second statement after 365 days fabricum.com users will be removed from group one and the option is no if the policy settings include an expiration date to remove after 30 days of expiration hence the statement is no third statement after 395 days fabricum.com users will be removed from the contrasto.com tenant and the option is yes depending on the life cycle of external user settings when the external user no longer has any access package assignments the external user is blocked from signing in and guest user account is removed from your directory next question number 10 you have an Azure subscription that contains the storage account shown in the following table. We see the columns name, kind, performance, replication, access tier. And we have the storage 1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively. Storage 1 is kind general purpose V1 with performance premium with replication GRS and the access tier none. Storage 2 with the general purpose V2 kind, performance standard and the replication local redundant storage and the access tier cool. Storage 3 with general purpose V2 kind, performance premium, read access geo redundant storage uh, replication and access tier hot. Storage 4, a blob storage kind, performance standard, LRS replication, access tier hot. You need to identify which storage account can be converted to zone redundant storage replication by requesting a live migration from Azure support. What should you identify? And the options are A. Storage 1, B. Storage 2, C. Storage 3, D storage 4 and the correct option is B storage 2. The key to the answer in this question is live migration. You can do live migration to ZRS from LRS or GRS only. Also this only applies on general purpose V2 storage. Next question number 11. You have an Azure storage account named storage 1. You plan to use AZ copy to copy data to storage 1. You need to identify the storage services in storage 1 to which you can copy the data. Which storage services should you identify? And the options are A. Blob, File, Table and Queue B. Blob and File only C. File and Table only D. File only E. Blob, Table and Queue only And the correct option is B. Blob and File only AZ copy is a command line utility that you can use to copy blobs or files to storage account or from storage account Next, question number 12. You have an Azure subscription named subscription 1 that contains the resources shown in the following table. Here we have the columns name, type, location, resource group. For RG1, the location is East US and RG2, the location is West US. Vault 1, location is West Europe, is in RG1. Storage 1 is in the location East US in RG2 resource group. Storage 2 is in West US, is in RG1 resource group. Storage 3 is in West Europe in RG2 resource group. Analytics 1 in East US location in RG1 resource group. Analytics 2 is in West US location in RG2 resource group. Analytics 3 is in West Europe location in RG1 resource group. You plan to configure Azure backup reports for Vault 1. You are configuring the diagnostic settings for the Azure backup reports log. Which storage account and which log analytics workspace can you use for the Azure backup reports of Vault 1? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. In the answer area, for storage account, the option is storage 3 only. Storage account must be in the same region as the recovery service vault, hence it's the storage 3. And for the log analytics workspace, and the option is analytics 1, 2 and 3. Set up one or more log analytics workspace to store your backup reporting data. The location and subscription where this log analytics workspace can be created is independent of the location and subscription where your vaults exist. Next, question number 13. You have two Azure virtual machines named VM1 and VM2. You have two recovery service walls named RSV1 and RSV2. VM2 is backed up to RSV1. You need to back up VM2 to RSV2. What should you do first? And the options are A. From the RSV1 blade, click backup items and stop the VM2 backup. B. From the RSV2 blade, click backup. From the backup blade, 
select the backup for the virtual machine and then click backup. See from the VM2 blade, click disaster recovery, click replication settings and then select RSV2 as the recovery services vault. D from the RSV1 blade, click backup jobs and export the VM2 job. And the correct option is A from the RSV1 blade, click backup items and stop the VM2 backup. VMs can only be backed up in a single recovery services vault. You have to stop the VM2 backup from the RSV1 first, otherwise you won't be able to find the VM2 in RSV2. Next, question number 14. You have an Azure storage account named storage one that contains a block container. The block container has a default access tier of hot. Storage one contains a container named container one. You create lifecycle management rules in storage one as shown in the following table. Here we see the uh, columns name, rule scope, blob type, blob subtype, run block, prefix match. For rule one, the rule scope is limit blobs by using filters. Block type is block blobs. Block subtype is base blobs. Rule block is if base blocks were not modified for two days, move to archive storage. If base blobs were not modified for nine days, delete the blob. And the prefix match is container one forward slash dep one. Rule two, the rule scope is apply to all blobs in storage one. Blob type is block blobs. Block subtype is base blobs. Rule block is if base blocks were not modified for three days, move to cool storage. If base blocks were not modified for nine days, move to archive storage. Prefix match is not applicable. You perform the actions shown in the following table. And we have the date and the actions. On October 1st, action is upload three files named dep one file1.docs, file2.docs and file3.docs to container one. On October 2, Edit dep one file one dot docs and file three dot docs. On October fifth, edit file two dot docs. For each of the following statements, select yes if the statement is true. Otherwise, select no. In the answer area for the first statement, on October ten, you can read dep one file one dot docs, and the correct option is yes. Second statement, on October ten, you can read file two dot docs, and the correct option is yes. And the third statement, on October 10, you can read file3.docs and the correct option is yes. All the files are uploaded to container1 include dep1 file1 not under container dep. Then the only rule that affect to all the files will be rule2. All files can be read and will be on cool tier. Next, question number 15. You have an Azure subscription that contains a virtual machine named VM1. You need to backup VM1. The solution must ensure that backups are stored across three availability zones in the primary region. Which three actions should you perform in sequence? To answer, move the appropriate actions from the list of actions to the answer area and arrange them in the correct order. And here we have the actions, configure a replication policy, set replication to zone redundant storage. For VM1, create a backup policy and configure the backup, set replication to locally redundant storage, create a recovery service vault. And the correct actions are, Configure a replication policy, set replication to zone redundant storage. For VM1, create a backup policy and configure the backup. And the reason is first we need to create recovery service vault and then set replication policy to ZRS because of the requirement for having in three separate zones. And for VM1, create a backup policy. Here we end with part 8. Thank you for watching part 8 of Azure Administrator Associate Real Exam Questions and Answers. We hope you found it informative and helpful. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel and comment for more related topics. We look forward to continuing the journey with you in next videos. Thank you.